What's up, guys? Welcome to our new show, The Better Broken Podcast. In this show, we're going to be interviewing amazing human beings, and we're going to be really talking about the hardships and the struggles that help them get to where they are and how those struggles help them become the people that they are today. Um, this is kind of based on my book that's going to be coming out in 2024, January, called Better Broken. So hope you guys enjoy. Check it out. We'll see you in the episode. So s- speaking of, of war in the the way that it changes us. I, I have sometimes difficulty kind of articulating how and why that happens. I don't really know. Mm-hmm. Um, I've almost got shot a few times. Yeah. I've almost shot my own leg off with a 320 incident. Uh, you know, I've been like three feet from the enemy. And I don't know how that affects yeah. things. I, I just see like, like I was saying, I got a call the, uh, from my, one of my teammates. Is like, oh, I remember this guy from 2-4. Uh, he just yeah. hung himself. And it's like, there's been so much suicide, yeah. and so you know that that thing is lingering there, but I I just don't know if it's something that just pops up randomly on guys or if they've been kind of slowly, quietly dealing with it mm-hmm. or it just comes out of nowhere. Who knows? I don't know. But um, So I, I guess I wouldn't be surprised if it just randomly popped up and not, I find myself yeah. kind of dealing. Uh, but... That being said, let's take an opportunity to talk about maybe a war experience for you or, or something. Let's let's kind of dig into a little bit of trauma yeah. and something that maybe stuck with you and how it affected you long term or how you kind of coped with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but just there's so much that we don't talk about, but there's so much trauma in this life. Yeah. And from seeing people blown to pieces to killing people to losing friends. Um, we all have a little bit of it. Yeah. Yeah. So is there any of yours that you would be willing to talk about? Yeah, so my very first one, um, and I think this is where it all started for me, and that's where I, that's where I, I, I figured it all out. So I was um, 19, 19 years old, uh, fresh out of basic training. I get to my first duty station, uh, and immediately, two months later, I'm in Iraq, Initial invasion, 2003, and I'm conducting uh, route clearance. All right, this was the beginning of the war. Um, IEDs weren't as um, advanced as they later became, uh, but it was still a threat, right? Um, so we were responsible for doing uh, route clearance. So whenever a convoy would come through to go deliver supply, because again, it's still the uh, genesis of the war. Uh, fobs are not a setup so we would have a lot of convoys come through to go deliver supplies so on and so forth so this was around uh the ramadi area so um at that point we had m112s which were uh, just uh regular uh track vehicles there was no up armored or any of that stuff so we got tasked to go clear um an actual route so the entire platoon goes out. It was, uh, I was the third vehicle in. It was a, a convoy of four. So we're going down this uh, um, route um, and we're going, we're going. And there was a big explosion uh, behind my vehicle. I was the second vehicle, uh, let me correct that. Yeah, so first vehicle, second, uh, third and fourth. So I was the second vehicle and I had the 249, I was a, um, a rare gunner, so I was just standing there, just uh, pulling security off to the side. So this big explosion goes off, and of course we're all shocked, we don't know what's going on, we're looking around, making sure, because we, we've gotten hit before, um, we just started to react how we typically do. So I'm facing the rear, so I, I see the explosion. Um, once the smoke clears, you know, I see the number four vehicle. So I'm thinking, okay, uh, the other one must be behind it, right? So I thought the vehicle that I saw was number three and then four was behind it. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh shit, they completely missed, right? When in reality, the entire fucking track was completely gone. Oh. Yeah, so it was 600 pounds of explosive that they had packed on the side of the road because we were going up a slight uh, incline, so they packed it from both sides. So when it went off, it served as like an EF. EFP and kind of shot up into the actual track and then blew the entire thing. So I, so I'm looking back and I'm like, okay, 
truck number three is right there. Four must be behind it. So I'm leaning to the side trying to see the fourth truck and I don't see it. And my gunner, he starts hitting the driver on the head. He's like, go, 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 go. And we looked up and the engine block was floating towards the troop hatch. Oh. So we he hauled ass and as soon as we move, it landed right there. So we're looking at each other like, holy fuck. Like the entire track is gone, right? And I'm 19. Uh, <laughs> so we all get out, we set up perimeter and we all get out and we're looking around and we start seeing, you know, vehicle parts, right? And we're walking around and a buddy of mine, he came up to me and he was like, hey, you know, Private Davis, he's decapitated. I didn't know what that meant, right? Because again, I, I just, like, I didn't know the English vocabulary mm -hmm. like that well, because I'm a, you know, I'm from Haiti, like I learned the language, certain words I just didn't know, mm -hmm. right? So to my ignorance, I'm like decapitated, like, well, what does that mean? He was like, his head is gone. Because he was driving, so when it hit, it took his head and then the uh, track just blew up and his body was laying, um, laying in a ditch. So I go over there and I look at him, I'm like, holy fuck, his entire fucking head is gone. And I remember walking around because at that point we didn't have everything as set up as we did later on in, in the years. So we had, um, we, we had to court on the entire area mm -hmm. and we had to start the cleanup process, right? So Davis was the only one intact. Everybody else was just pieces, right? So, and again, uh, my, they were my platoon, my dudes that we were, you know, bullshitting with. And I just remember going through and just picking up body parts and putting them in bags, right? So total, we lost six dudes just from that incident, right? And again, I'm 19, <laughs> I, we, finally got a, a platoon to come replace us, an infantry platoon, and the entire platoon goes back to the FOB. And dude, for the first, I wanna say it was a couple of hours, it was just silence. And I, for me, like I just remember like not knowing what to think. <laughs> like I didn't know what to feel or what to think. Yeah, I just, just remember, know. cause it's like, like, what the fuck? Like I'm. I just I went to my room and it was just just quiet all the way around because you don't know what to say to your buddy. He doesn't know what to say to you. You don't know what just happened. You know what I mean? So wow. we we all just sat there and we just kind of like numb all the way around, right? Um, 